Hello, my name's Tragic O'Hara, and today, well, it was a while ago actually, it's on my bucket list. Not right now, it's not something I want to do right now, right, but it's on my list of things that I would like to do eventually. One day, I would like to do stand-up. Not that I think I'd be any good at it, if I'm completely honest, but it kind of scares me. Like, when I make these videos, I can edit out the bits that I don't think are funny, and I quite, I don't know, it, it scares me, and that's why I would like to do it. So... It's on my bucket list that one day I would like to do stand-up. Now, let's just say that one night I came up with an idea where I would try and tell a couple of stories of stuff that had happened to me before. And let's say I tried five stories, right? Let's just say I went away and I kind of went over in my head five different stories about things that used to happen when I was out playing gigs and that. That hypothetically I would do if I ever done stand-up. Now let's just say <laughs> that I edited the whole thing and some of it was rubbish, right? Let's just say that's what happened. There's, but one of them, a couple of them, not all of them are rubbish, but one, maybe three, two or three turned out not too bad. Not too bad. For a first attempt, it just kind of taught, obviously there's no one here, it's just me. So let's just say I've chopped all the, the dead weight away and I'm telling one story. That's it. Just... Just to see what happens, because I made it, it wasn't all good, but I've took it a bit that I think, eh, it's okay, I can live with that. And let's just say this is it. Right, I'm changing everyone's name in this. It was all we do with me, but see all the supporting characters? I'm changing the names and locations, because I don't know if these people want me to tell these stories about them. So I'm just making that bit up. This is real. Let me just say this, this is real, I didn't write this, this isn't made up, this is... And when I say it's real, these are the way that... This was years ago, right? This was 5th, 12, I don't know, a lot, many years, over a decade. 12, 13 years ago this happened, this particular story. I was burning the candle at both ends and I hadn't slept for a while. We were travelling from one place to the next, we had to get a boat, right, to the Isle of Isla. I can tell you that, it's the, it was the Isle of Isla. Now, I, I don't know if you've ever been to the Isle of Isla. I've only been once, and the bit that I went to, there was nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> there was the hotel we were playing in a, in a shop. Now, when I turned up, I wasn't in a good place. Right? I was, um, what the problem was the best way to say this? I, I had melted. My brain had melted, and it was no longer working at full capacity anymore. And I was like, I was a ship in the night, shall we say. I was, I had the fear. That's the best way to say I had the fear Bad, I had bad, bad, bad fear, really bad fear. And David noticed that I had really bad fear. And I, and the hotel wasn't open and like usually what I would have done if I had bad fear, I would have had a pint or something and just just got on with it, right? But it was shut. <laughs> so I couldn't I couldn't do anything like that, right? As I say, I was a very different person back then, right? Now, you see, as much as I was saying, like my, mate, my, my, my good friends, my mates and stuff like that would give me pelters, like, I... Of course they did. We all done it, right? We all ripped the hole out of each other. But when it when the, when it went down, man, we were all we were all good guys. Do you know what I mean? We weren't going to leave you floundering. So Dave had said, "Look, don't swear it, man. Don't worry. Right? We'll go a walk. Let's go a walk." Couldn't get a signal on my phone. Couldn't talk to anybody. I wanted to phone one friend in particular because he was very good at talking me down, right? Uh, and I couldn't get him. Couldn't get a hold of him. So Dave's like that. We can go to the top of this hill. Just walk up the hill. You'll get a signal. Not even that. Right? If we get to the top of this hill, you'll see humanity, you'll see other places. Maybe there's a town or something, there's like a wee village or something we can walk in, do something like that. You can, we, can, we, can get, we can get a wee sandwich <laughs> and we can come back. I was like, that, that sounds wonderful. That sounds, that's exactly what I need. So we started walking up this hill and as I walked up to the top of the hill and I looked over the, is it the brow, is that what you call it? Over the brow of the hill, there was nothing. Just Fields. <laughs> For as far as I could see, nothing. No civilization. Which didn't help. And then I looked at my phone and there was nothing. No bars. <laughs> oh, it's a long walk back down this hill, right? So, start walking back down the hill and Dave sees a thing at the side of the road, right? And it's a bird. It's a bird. Now, if we had this conversation now, I don't even know if he remembers this, but if we had this conversation now, I would probably, we would probably still have the same viewpoint on this. I thought the bird was dead. Dave felt otherwise. He thought the bird was still alive. Okay? I'm sure it was dead. He would say something different. Let's just agree to disagree. 
okay? It was like Schrodinger's cat, is that what it is? Like, it was just, it was, it, he thought he could bring it back to life. <laughs> I thought it was dead. <laughs> and we had an argument about the bird. Right? Which really helped me forget all the other stuff that was going on because all my attention now was focused on proving that this bird was dead. And Dave was like, that's a shame. This poor bird has been struck by a car and it needs urgent medical assistance. And I said, it's dead. <laughs> that is a dead bird that has been struck with a car and requires a bigger bird or something to come and eat it. That's what it's, that's the circle of life. If the Lion King taught me anything, it taught me that. Dave decides to take the bird down to the hotel. So Dave picks up the bird and he carries it down the hill, right? It might have been alive, I don't know. I don't know, it might have been alive, but it was a nice thing to do. That's the one thing you can't argue. I'd have left it. <laughs> I had no intention of fi figuring out whether this bird was alive or not. But Dave, with the heart of gold, wanted to make sure this bird was okay. So he walks the dead bird down the, down the hill. <laughs> Into the hotel, right? And, and he walks up to the woman in the hotel with the dead bird in his hands. It's not dead, it's alive. He thinks it's alive, but I'm, I'm sure it's dead. And he's holding the dead bird. He's like, do you have an empty box of crisps or something that I could put this bird into uh, until we find a way to make sure that the bird is okay? And the woman probably wasn't happy with the fact there was a dead bird sitting on a bo an alive bird sitting on a on a bar, and I, so gave him a box of crisps. I think she just like, just like emptied all the crisps. There you go and get out. So he took the box out, lined it with grass, and he put the bird inside it. Okay, now that bird sat with us on a picnic table for the rest of the day till the gig happened. Right, that bird was there. It never uttered a word. <laughs> There was not a bird spoke, spoken from the bird. The bird was silent because the bird was dead, right? But, but he thought he could bring it back to life, right? I raise a, 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 I think it's a valid point because we need to get on a boat to go to the next place, which would have been Aaron, the Isle of Aaron. And I raise a point when I'm like, there is no way you are getting on that boat with that bird in a box. You need to find something to do with this bird. Like, you can't take it with you, right? And there is no way I'm going to be stuck in this island because you want to keep this bird alive, right? That's not happening. It is not an option. If it's me or the bird, I will win, right? That was, I will leave you here <laughs> with that bird. And that's it. There's no questions. That is that's that is my point of view. And he took, yeah, he took it on and he said, right, well, I'll figure something out to do with this bird. So, later on that night, I need to find a new a name. Let's call this guy Shug. Right, this guy was Shug. Yeah, this guy was definitely a Shug. A big Hugh, a big Huey, big Hugh Shug, right? So, this guy appears out of nowhere at this gig, right? And he was a big lad, man. He was probably the height of me, but he was two. He was a, he was, he was a muscly, muscly guy, right? And he was a scary big guy, right? And he appears out of nowhere. Nowhere, this guy. And he walks straight up to Dave, and he's like, how are you doing? And Dave's like, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm okay, how are you? So, and as it turns out, this guy was from where we live, right? And he had seen a poster at the other end of the island. He was in a camper van with his, I don't know if it was his wife or his girlfriend, but he, they were doing a camper tour. And he noticed Dave's name on this poster and was like, I know that guy. I recognise that guy's name. That's where we're going. We're going to go see this guy. And that's how he appeared. He... Was a lovely big guy, right? Like when, like such a sound. Shug was sound. Shug was sound, right? So I was like that. What are you doing tomorrow, Shug? Where are you going? Shug's like that. I'm staying here. I am staying. <laughs> I'm staying here, uh, and I'm not going anywhere. Dave, why don't you give the bird to Shug? I need to set the scene. Isla. Is not was not the greatest place for me at that particular point in time. But Isla is a beautiful place, beautiful man. Like so, like when we turned up, I can appreciate it now, right? Looking back, like this hotel sat looking directly onto the sea, right? And then there was a slipway for this boat that would appear, and you could see that it's at the Paps of Jura. Is that what you call it? That's where they make the whiskey and stuff. And like that was in the back, like that. There was a huge big. Like in my head, I don't know if this is what it looked like, but in my head it was like a, a cat, like a like a cliff face, and this hotel sat there, and the sun was splitting the trees. It was glorious, 
glorious, right? And at night it looked even better. Do you know what I mean? Like it was like the sun was setting. It was oh man, it was honestly. I, I can't give this enough justice. I, I can't take. Ta I cannot give this place enough justice. It was beautiful, right? Beautiful for a country bumpkin like me, right? That was stunning. Anyway, I used to smoke back in the day. Not anymore. I gave it up, right? But there was a an archway. You could smoke in the pubs. That's how long ago we were, right? So the, you, there was this, there was an archway. Could you smoke in the pubs? I don't know. Maybe I was just doing it because it was a big silly, but the archway was stunning, right? So the, the, the hotel was like this, right? Archway's like that. Dave's facing me. I'm facing out. You can see this beautiful scene, sunset, beautiful. I'm talking to me, Dave. Dave has handed the box with the bird to Shug. And Shug's went, Dave, don't you worry anymore. That problem is non-existent. I will take care of this bird and I will nurse it back to its former self. That's how good a guy Shug was. <laughs> he took a bird off a guy in a box <laughs> and decided that he was going to help this, this poor defenceless creature. So Dave's, Dave's like, thank you very much, Shug. Shug takes a box, this is what I see, I see Shug taking the box, turning around and walking away in this archway, stunning, right, looking out in the sea, and he's got the box, and he stops, and he opens up the box and he looks in, right, and he closes it and he disappears, for a bit, and I'm talking about Dave, and Dave's like, do you think, do you think Shug will look after that bird? Aye, I, I have no doubt in my mind that Shug's going to do the right thing, like, he seems like a lovely guy, just as I said that, in this archway, I see Shug <laughs> run, right, and horse, <laughs> and horse this box into the ocean, this into the sea, boof, volleys this thing, right, and the dead bird just boosh, explodes at the top of this box, and you <laughs> flies and gradunk into the sea, and all I can see is Dave's wee face, and how how happy he was he found a nice person that's going to look after his bird. And Shug felt the same as me. That bird was dead. That bird, <laughs> that bird was... If it, it was no saving that bird. And I had to hold that laugh in until later when I could properly let that go because there was no way I could have let Dave know that that had happened. I think I let him know after it. Or if he's watching it now, sorry Dave, but that bird was dead and Shug passed into the sea. Yeah. So as I said... These are not stories of supermodels in the Mud Shark Hotel and stuff. Because that was never me. I never played any big places. I played I played some decent kind of size gigs in that. But see the small places and playing in front of no one in like small groups and stuff, they were the best gigs because stuff would happen. Something would happen. See, whenever I played in like Glasgow or like Edinburgh, and even like when I went away, like I was in Brighton and London, eh, Milton Keynes, like all these kind of places, like things never really happened like that. There were there was too many people and everybody knew they were out for a night out and they were all going home and stuff and like but when real funny things happen in the middle of nowhere. Like I remember seeing some mental stuff. Like that's pretty lightweight that one, right? Like and it was dead hard to do because I was aware that I wasn't like I was trying not to swear and stuff, do you know what I mean? And, but like, if I, ever, if I ever done stand up, it would be like in front of over 18s. So I would kind of let loose on that a wee bit. But that, that, there you go. That was it. So I, I don't even know why I put that out. Like, I've no, I don't really know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. That's it. There you go. There's a story. If anything, it's, it's given me a bit of practice in telling stories. That's all. So, if you enjoyed it, thank you very much for watching. You can get me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. At Mr. Tragic O'Hara. If you enjoyed it, please hit the subscribe button. And next time, I'm not even going to do it. I don't know. Big don't know. I'm just going to say don't know because I don't know what this is. So I don't know. <laughs>